He was born Bobby Ray Mercer on May 20th, 1946 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Bobby excelled at sports from a young age and was offered spots on the Oklahoma Sooners football squad and the Dodgers baseball team. But Bobby chose a different path when Tom Greenway, the man who signed fellow Oklahoman Mickey Mantle, asked Bobby to become a New York Yankee right out of high school. Many may think that becoming a Yankee was the most important moment in Bobby's life, but those who knew him knew it was a distant second to finding his wife Kay. They met in grade school, and Bobby was smart enough to never let go. They were married in 1966, and throughout Bobby's many successes and occasional failures on the field, he was always supported by the true love of his life. After playing for just over a year in the minor leagues at shortstop, Bobby made his debut as a bomber in 1965. He showed early promise as he got to play with his idol, Mickey Mantle, and soon it became clear that he would leave the infield and eventually take over center field as heir to Mantle and DiMaggio. Mercer left the team in 1967 to serve in the U.S. Army and returned to the Bronx in 1969, a stronger, more mentally prepared player. During his prime, Bobby was a staple in the outfield and the All-Star game. He was one of the bright lights during a dark era of Yankees baseball, and his play and personality connected with fans, making him the favorite Yankee for countless kids who grew up in the early 70s. Bobby missed out on the Yankees' return to glory as he was traded after the 1974 season to the San Francisco Giants. After suffering through his years in windblown Candlestick Park, Bobby moved on to the Chicago Cubs and found some relief in the friendly confines of Wrigley Field, but he longed to go home. He finally made it home again when he was traded back to the Yankees in 1979, but the joy would be short-lived. It was in that year that the Yankees lost Thurman Munson in a tragic airplane accident. Bobby and Thurman had come up together as young players and developed a friendship that transcended the field of play. After Munson's death, the Yankees traveled to Canton, Ohio to lay their captain to rest. Bobby stood by his friend one final time and said goodbye. Thurman Munson wore the pinstripes with number 15, but in living, Loving and legend, history will record my friend as number one. The team flew back to the Bronx that night and played a contest that will be remembered forever. Bobby drove in all five Yankees runs with a homer and a ninth inning single to win the game. Emotion won this game. The Yankees rallied, beat us five to four, and Bobby drove in all five runs. And uh, he had himself a big night under tough circumstances and shows you what the uh, type of guts he had. He was a tough player. Afterwards, he gave his bat to Thurman's wife, Diana, never to be swung again. Mercer remained with the Yankees for the rest of his career, helping them win a division title in 1980 and reach the World Series in 1981. In 1983, Bobby was asked to retire so that the Yankees could call up a young prospect named Don Mattingly. He had enthusiastically carried the pinstripe tradition on his shoulders after Mantle, and he graciously passed that tradition on to a new generation. Always a team player first, Bobby shed the pinstripes, and that night, he began a new career in the booth. He worked Yankee games on TV and radio, taking a brief break in 1985 to work in the front office. He worked with great broadcasters, but it was his time with the scooter, Phil Rizzuto, that fans will always remember most dearly. And make it, and blow it so much out of proportion, and back an athlete in the corner, take a paternalistic position, and really aggravate somebody. The Bombers returned to glory in 1996, and Bobby was a part of it, broadcasting throughout that renaissance. His reporting from the field on Old Timers Days was something special to not only Yankees fans, but to the Yankees themselves. It's all about the pinstripes and the guys that played here, and of course it's all about Yankee Stadium. Bobby Ray Mercer was a religious man who believed that he was his brother's keeper. He worked for several charities, including one that was close to his heart, the Baseball Assistance Team, an organization that aids former major leaguers after their playing days are over. A former tobacco user, Bobby lobbied the Oklahoma State Legislature to pass a bill enhancing the regulation of tobacco sales to minors, a bill that passed and bears Bobby Mercer's name.
Bobby's finest hour may also have been his toughest. In December of 2006, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He underwent surgery and treatment for the disease and never wavered in his desire to resume his life as a broadcaster, father, grandfather, husband, and friend. He returned to the broadcast booth in 2007 and proudly waved to his second family in his second home, 161st Street and River Avenue. Once again, Bobby showed that life was a gift meant to be enjoyed and cherished. Bobby Mercer lived his life with passion and joy. He had big dreams and made them all come true.